So Largo is a teenage guy. He actually just threw up in the trash can because I we think I don't think it's a virus. I think it's because he just took like all of his vitamins at once. Big mistake. <laughs> Big mistake. Because he feels fine and he's eating again. So apparently, <laughs> apparently it wasn't anything that bad. Oh boy, what a way to start a morning, huh? Yeah. <laughs> A hiker. Right. Oh, look, there's a bag that looks just like mine up there. Will you throw mine in there, Largo? Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Are we in the party bus? Yep. <laughs> yeah, there might be five on that back seat. Oh, um, five of us. Unless somebody wants to ride in the back. I hope they're skinny minis. <laughs> Might be a little chilly back I'd there. I'd be huh? fine doing that. That'd be, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, you want to volunteer to do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My first soul, though. I mean, I do it all the time. But... We're nice and cozy this morning. <laughs> We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, hopefully, I don't get pulled over by a cop. <laughs> this might hey, be. Hey, listen, I'm a retired deputy sheriff from Tampa. All right, you I got did pulled. It for 24 years. <laughs> I got that retirement badge. All right, tomorrow. good. Okay. Good. <laughs> We're snuggly. Like I said, I don't I don't think about normally I'll try to say something about riding in the back, but I just don't think about it because I do it all day long. Just after being stated cold towards you. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what I said. Yeah, I'm over. I would do it. Did you guys did you guys hike yesterday in the rain? Yeah. We did too. How many miles did you do? We did about four and a half. We did six, so not much more than you. We were, and we were just, we were done. Well, we started here and the rain drops about, like, just like intermittent about 5.30. And I, finally at 6, I looked at him and I was like, let's get up. We got to go. But you couldn't see. Yeah. It was so foggy. It was really foggy. Was Even foggy. with our headlamps, like, I'm trying to put it at the ground. Then I'm like, this, I was miserable. Good morning, day six, it's 8.20. We are back at the scene of the crime, guys. <laughs> and although it's not raining as hard, it's still kind of ominous it's and drizzly yeah. and whatnot. We had hoped for better weather, but apparently it's supposed to get better today. Hopefully. Um, Largo's feeling better. He, it was just his vitamins. It was not the norovirus. And we just had a really fun ride in the car. So I think, are yeah. we ready for this? We're ready. We're ready, we're ready. Do we sound ready? We're so ready. <laughs> Ready-ish. Ready. So, the weather forecast predicted a little different for today. Um, but, we roll with it. Um, I guess if we get all the shit in the beginning, that we'll be prepared for what's ahead of us. And it'll seem easier. I'm doing a serious straight up right now without a switch back about 15 minutes into the morning. Largo is a bit ahead of me at this point. Um, so you guys can see it's pretty yucky out here. But it's not particularly cold and it's not pouring like yesterday. So there is a positive to this. I know it's hard to tell from this video, but you guys, that's the sun. I am walking to the sun. Sunshine is walking to the sun to find Captain who's someplace up there probably sunbathing right now. He's probably so happy to see the sun. <laughs> Captain, where are you? There you are, the sun. Did you see the sun? Maybe. That thing that is warming your body and burning your eyes is the sun trying to get through. 
I know it's a maybe. We haven't seen it in days. We will not let it get through, though. <laughs> let it through. Let it through. Oh. oh my gosh, it feels nice. I feel it. <laughs> so Largo's having an issue with his pants. Um, he loves his pants, and we'll talk about them later, the brand and stuff. They're actually, snowboarder pants, which are perfect, waterproof and fleece and all that stuff. But they're a little too big, and they're fa falling down. And he mentioned a belt, but I feel like I read that you shouldn't wear a belt when hiking because um, it pushes. There's so many things, like, strapped around you that it pushes, and it makes uncomfortableness and chafing and all that stuff. So I'm thinking about having a seamstress just put in a couple. I think they're called darts, where... Um, where you pull it in on the sides of the pants and then when he grows over the next six months he can just take them out do you guys have a different suggestion that might work like a hiker hack or something because <laughs> logo's pants are falling down right now are <laughs> you doing okay i'm doing fine it's just a bit uncomfortable and hard to deal with <laughs> he's got like six inches of boxers hanging out the top <laughs> oh my god So Largo and I are going to be crossing roads and this for six months. We've got to have some fun doing it. So we've decided, why did the chicken cross the road? To hike the AT. To hike the AT. So we're going to do the chicken walk across the road every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best chicken walk I've ever seen, Largo. <laughs> back there right there is Largo we've actually stopped for an hour because he has a French class that he's taking right now so he's got one bar 5g <laughs> we just stopped on the middle of the trail for him to take his French class which is really really cool and so I'm I'm gonna try and walk and talk to you guys and just tell you a little bit about um, our education style I'm sure we're gonna talk about this quite a bit still a little cold um, on the trail but I'll just kind of give you an overview right now to kind of because I'm sure a lot of you are curious so Largo is a sophomore in high school he is most most people we just tell him it's world he's homeschool because that's a word that people understand and know and is more common um, among those who don't school traditionally but he's actually what's called world schooling which is a style of education that varies from family to family um, person to person and across the globe but the basic, sorry, my lips are a little dry because I just ate my trail mix, uh, a little salty. Um, it's a style of education that takes a global approach to educating the child. So they learn languages, they learn about different cultures, different ways of living, different governments. And the idea is to make them, um, make them a good person with a lot of knowledge about the world. All, all aspects of education that you can imagine, just doing it from an ever-changing backdrop. And people that educate like this also don't need to be full-time travelers. They can take this approach in a traditional life, in a stationary life, learning at home and just educating about the world, um, just not being out in it like like we are. And so for us, probably in a video in the next couple of days, we'll explain our backstory. But just to give you an idea, we have been traveling full time for 10 years. And so part of his world schooling is traditional in the sense that he wants to go to university in the US and become a pilot. So we have to meet certain benchmarks. And right now he's studying he's with his French teacher because he's taking the French advanced placement and Spanish event placement in May. And we will have to get off the trail for three weeks for that. Um, and then he has an English class and then all the other classes that he's taking are pretty much done for the school year. Um, so he's not going to be doing a ton of school on the trail, but he does have to do some. So what I think is really cool about the way we, we educate is, where is he? Uh oh, did I lose him? Is that we can just stop pending we have service and he can take a class out here on the Appalachian Trail. So he's getting exercise and learning from people that we're meeting along the way and making new friends, as well as still accomplishing his goals of um, his education so that he can reach the career of becoming a pilot. Yeah, but this just kind of gives you an overview of how we educate and why he's able to be on the trail right now and not sitting in a classroom, which is really, really cool. There's all kinds of different ways to educate out in the world and I just love them all. So questions below if you guys have them. Largo made a friend. What's the dog's name? Newt. Hi, Newt. Do you like to hike? Hi. Hi, I don't have another hand or I'd pet you. You probably smell our cat on us, even though this has been washed a bunch of times. 
So we just chatted with Dougie's owner and he said, he's a local, he lives here. He takes the dog out on the trail every day. The sun's out and he said, he thinks that we're not gonna get any more cold spells. But he had a bear horn or spray, like the size of my foot. I have size nine feet, okay? And I was like, it was right on the front of his like belt. And I said, why do you have that? <laughs> Should we be really concerned? Cause I have a little one that's in like the back bag that I have to dig out if anyone comes along. And he said it's mostly cause his dog will chase after the bears and then run back to him and then the bears will come back to him. So I'm not too worried. He was a really nice guy. I didn't get his name, um, but thank you for chatting with us. Presto guys, do we look a little different? <laughs> it's amazing what a couple hours can do. We've shed all of our layers, our rain gear. I've got my sunglasses on. Largo's barely wearing anything at this point. A little costume change. A little costume change. And we're still happy. We're a little bit happier now because we have less gear on. And we're going to hike for about another hour and 15 minutes. And then Largo has Spanish class. So we've decided that we're going to do our big dinner meal that we cook on the pot. I'm gonna cook it while he's in Spanish since I've got an hour to kill anyway. And then we'll just do something light and easy tonight and get into camp later. So we'll give you an update soon. So we might have messed up a little bit. Largo apparently didn't have Spanish today. It starts next Wednesday. So I have all the food out because we were going to have our big meal now while he was taking Spanish. So I didn't kill time. But we, did, we are at a water source. So we refilled everything and we're making our lunch. And then we're going to get on the way because we have a lot of mileage to cover in the next two days to get to our location. So Largo is... Largo's having... Oops. Oh, shit. I just did some, Largo's having... Creamy mac and cheese, and I'm having stroganoff sauce with mushrooms, and so hopefully it's it's pretty good. All amazing and delicious food. Are you sad that you don't have Spanish right now? Kind of. Kind of, right? We to have be good wise. Slightly, life? yeah. This is a nice spot. It is the a nice spot. The bugs are annoying me though. They go after me. The bugs love you, Largo. They don't touch me. They like sweet things. I guess I'm not that sweet. <laughs> <laughs> This is a pleasant lunch spot. We're just gonna do our pepperoni and cheese and tortillas for dinner tonight and just hike as much as we can since it's such a beautiful day. Had an awesome lunch by this water source mini waterfall. And you guys, today is like the great day of changes. Not for Largo, he's kind of the same stuff on, but my one and a half outfits, I've got my baseball cap on now. You guys have seen this, and then right down here, I'm in shorts, ah! I don't know what to do, but it's so hot. So we just had our first chat with someone on the trail who shared their story with us. And it's a personal story, and they said they hadn't shared it with anyone else. So it stays right in here, and we're not gonna share it. Um, but this is what we find from long hikes, that people share their stories and sometimes they're, power, they're enlightening and they've overcome something and it's joyful and sometimes it's heartbreaking. And sometimes they want us to film and share their story on our vlogs and sometimes they don't, they just want it private. And so we keep a lot of the stories right in here. And we think about these people throughout the day and, you know, a hike is healing, right? And from one day to the next or from the beginning to the end, a lot changes. So we thank anyone who shares their story with us, whether they want it to just be kept between us and them or whether they want to share it on the vlog. We welcome sharing on the vlog. Just let us know if you meet us along the way and you want to share your story or your why. Um, we have a podcast called The Why Matters because the why in life really matters and the why behind we all, why we all do the things we do. So check it out. Go give us a follow, a comment, a review. We would love it because it's brand new um, and it's really such a passion project. So we started this hike days ago, but yesterday we started and it was horrible, right? The weather was terrible. Even this morning when we got up, the weather was not particularly great. And now it's fabulous and it's kind of... I find it to be very symbolic when you take a hike, whether it's a day hike, multi-day, multi-months, or something like this one, which is half a year. 
there's great growth and change and discovery and recharge and renew and enlightenment that happens. Um, so to the person who shared their personal story with us this morning, you will be okay. I, I, just, I just know it. Can he do it? Can he do it? Can he fit underneath? Oh, oh, he did it! Was it hard? It was incredibly difficult. Difficult, looked difficult. If I am correct, I believe the AT is referred to as the green canopy or something along that line. And it feels like it today what we're walking through. It is absolutely stunning. It's protecting us from the sun, which is nice. A lot of people don't even bring sunglasses on the trail because they don't think they need them. I, I've enjoyed them today. Who knows if we'll need them the rest of the time. But look at this, look at the scenery around me. I mean, it really, it feels like we're walking through a magical space. And then we're gonna come upon, I don't know, like Alice in Wonderland and the rabbit hole or something, I don't know. But something really magical and cool. It's charming and it feels refreshing and it feels so nice after what we went through yesterday and even this morning. If I was a leprechaun, this is where I would be living. This little path right here, it, I don't know if it's translating well or not, but it is so green and so magical. And look at this, it's beautiful. Oh, where, oh, where is the leprechaun? So two hikers just passed us going southbound and they asked us if we saw the bears. Apparently a mile back behind us, some people in front of us saw bears. We did not see the bears. Um, I'm kind of happy. I'm not ready to see bears. It's only day six. Uh, we're still getting our, our feet under us and I'm just not, I don't think I'm mentally ready for that. However, where we're camping tonight is only a half a mile from here. So that means the bears are, let's do our math, 1.5 miles from us. So they may make an appearance tonight. So we gotta make sure we get all of our stuff out of our bag. So basically in our bear can each night, all of our food is in there. Any, anything with a fragrance, deodorant, toothpaste, hand sanitizer, um, chapstick, uh, what else? I think that's about it. But that kind of stuff that has any type of fragrance has to be in the bear can. Oh, and all of these trash. In the bear can or in the bear bag and either bear bag hung up in the air or bear can put away from camp. So we're gonna do a double check tonight. Lago is learning that the bugs love him. They're not anywhere near me, but they haven't left him alone for the last half hour. <laughs> What's it, for dinner, this Largo? Is a bug spray. What's for dinner? Bug spray. Bug spray? Yeah. What do we have there? A tortilla, pepperoni, and cheese. This is, this is, MREs would be so much better than We have some if you want to cook an MRE. We had one for lunch, so. We're too tired. And it gave me a lot of gas and stomach pain, so <laughs> I don't want it again right now. Look how, look, it took us, I think it probably took us less, probably five minutes to set it up today. Largo, mm -hmm. what do you think? I think we're getting better at this. I can't talk to him right now, he's eating. Something we splurged for that I did not want and Will was like, you need to have it, it weighs nothing, is this little thing. Can you stick it out, Largo? What's the brand? It's the Flex Tail Gear. Flex Tail Gear, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's a little pump that blows up our air mattresses. Largo blew one up by his mouth the other night when we were in a hotel and he was like, oh my gosh. So this is the gear review for the day. What's it called, Flex Tail? Flex Tail. Flex Tail and we absolutely love it. It takes two seconds, it's super small. Um, I don't know, it looks like maybe two inches in, in, um, maybe in diameter, it's about an inch and a quarter, totally worth it. And since Logo always puts our mattresses together, he thinks it's totally worth it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so behind us here and here, we're at the furthest most spot that you can probably put uh, maybe one more tent can fit over there at this shelter. There's a shelter over there. There's a privy, which is a toilet. And there's a water source down the hill. And I would say there's probably about 15 tents here. It's the most we've ever seen so far since we've been 
out in the woods, which has only been a couple nights, <laughs> but it is still the most that we've seen so far. Um, I've been told that we're in what's called the bubble, which is like where a lot of people start at once and then they kind of move forward as a bubble together. Um, and then once people start dropping off, uh, it becomes less of a bubble. So it doesn't feel like we're in a bubble because Largo and I only see about eight to 10 people during the day, but then you get to a place like this and there's a bundle of people here. So you're like, oh, I guess there is a bubble. Let's talk about our storage for a minute. So we went with bear cans and you can go bear can or sack or bear bag. And the main reason Largo and I, <laughs> Largo's gonna juggle. The main reason Largo and I went with the bear cans, to be honest, is that we were trying to stack the cards in our favor about of how much we could handle each night. And there's a lot of things that were brand new for us. So the bear bags seem like a bit of a wrangle to have to get them up in the tree if they didn't already have something provided for you to hook them up in the tree. And I'm going to show you when it's provided and then when it's not kind of what you have to do. Um, so, um, and we knew when we bought them that we'd probably switch to bear bag. But like I said, we just couldn't see like in the beginning when we're trying to figure out how to use our water filter, how to set up our tent, how to use our stove, and then trying to throw this up at night in a tree when we were done. We just thought, nope, no way. So what we do each night is, ready Largo? Yep. We head out into the woods. I mean, we don't have to go too, too far from our campsite, but we put our bear cans away from our tent. We try to put them someplace that the bear can't like roll them down a hill. Um, Logger, you think this is far enough? You think it's fine? Yep. Okay, so this is where it is. And our tent is over there. And the idea is that the bear cannot get into these that they will claw and scratch at them right here, but they don't have the ability to get into them. I think their claws are too big, but I would Google that. All right, so now I'm gonna take you over to where they provide, where you can hang your bear bags. So not all sites provide this, but these are the bear bags. And so you can pull them down from over here, right here, and then you can hoist your bag up which is super, super easy. However, this is not on every, at every shelter, which means you actually have to throw your bear bag up there, the line up over a tree and then hoist it up in the air. Now people say it's not too difficult and I'm sure it isn't with a lot of practice, but Largo and I are not practiced at all. So we have to get some practice. They actually look really cool up in the sky. There's a couple more over there. And then the last one is the Ursac, which is a favorite by many. It's like really kind of almost like a thick bear bag that some just leave on the ground. You're supposed to, I think, put it a certain amount of inches off or something. I don't know a lot about that one, but that may be the next one we try. We'll see. So far, the bear can's working out. This is Jessica reporting live from Largo's microphone that he will not let me touch and will not let me have my own tonight. Oh my <laughs> He's very, very controlling about the microphone. All right, so... Today we went from Tenasapi Gap to, oh, I forgot where we are now. <laughs> Blue, we went 13. Blue, Blue Mountain? We went 13 miles. 13 miles. And it was our, we went 13.6 one day, but this was 13 miles. And it, I felt like it was our easiest day ever. Did you feel like that? Yeah, I'd say so. And I don't think it's that we're just getting stronger. I think this terrain was, this was a beautiful, beautiful hike. We had one major uphill in the morning and then it was just like level, like circling around the mountains and then one major uphill before we got to camp tonight. And it was, it was beautiful. We were in all kinds of like green canopies and the weather was perfect and everything. It was an awesome day. And I don't, what, what was, what's your best part of the day? I'd say the best part of my day was that it was sunny. <laughs> I know, because we've had bad weather for two days. I think, um, gosh, I don't want to copy the same thing, but, and it sounds so simple, but not hiking in the rain and just being in the sun felt so good. And today I actually got to put my shorts on. So I think the sun was the best part of my day. So we had a really lovely conversation with a young guy as well for about an hour hiking with him, which was really special. Uh, the worst part, hmm, do you know what your worst part was? I don't think there was a worse part, to be honest. I think today was actually a really good day. Yeah, I I don't think I had a worse part either. I'm trying to think. I didn't fall. I didn't pee on myself. 
I didn't wasn't freezing. <laughs> like it was a really good day today, Larco. We set our tent up quite quickly. Um, yeah. So so tomorrow. So day seven is tomorrow day seven. Day seven and day eight. We're gonna get off the trail on day eight. So we have to do twenty miles in like a day and a morning, and they're really hard miles on like some big uphills. So I'm a little nervous about that. But we're in our sleeping bags, our quilts, and it's I think it's like seven o'clock. So we're gonna be to sleep super early and then just hit it hard tomorrow. So um, thank you everyone who's joined us here. If you subscribe, thank you. Thank you for commenting. We're so, so appreciative and grateful that you're here on this journey with us. So thank you. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow. Are the Fruit Loops and the bagel making you feel better? Let's volunteer someone else first since you're not feeling great this morning. Oh my God. I don't want to be off the trail in a mile. <laughs> All right, guys, enjoy it. Bye. Yeah, like, you're gonna, you guys are a test. <laughs> so you're gonna have to go up wildcat. Good morning from day six. It's about what time is it Largo? I can't see my watch. It's <laughs> some it's some time at all. <laughs> Largo's over here, Tech Central, charging everything up. How's it going, Largo? Good. Are we gonna make it? No. No. <laughs> We're gonna survive tomorrow with our Faro app guiding us through the AT. Hopefully.